Hello everyone, Gabe here, PC community developer here at Ubisoft, and welcome back to another episode of PC for Beginners. If you're looking to build a new PC or maybe upgrade a few components, then this video is for you. While you're searching for those perfect parts, you've probably come across the term bottlenecking and why it's important that you pick parts to make sure you don't run into one. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the two main ones, CPU and GPU. And the secret is, it's not that hard to avoid it. Let's get to it. The best way to understand a bottleneck is, well, a nice visualization. So let's imagine highways, traffic, and those lovely traffic jams. We all know how a highway or a freeway is supposed to work. Everyone moving at or near the same speed in order to get where they're going. When everything works as intended, there are no traffic jams, but we all know that that's not really the reality. We can also think of a balanced PC in the same way. The vehicles driving on the highway are the frames that your GPU is rendering. The highway itself is the CPU, making sure everything is moving forward. In the best case scenario, these are perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Let's say that we've been driving on this highway for about a mile. Our once three-lane highway has now become a two-lane highway, and later on down the road, it turns into a single lane. Now all the cars on the highway are funneling into a single lane, the traffic is slowing down, and suddenly there's even a light that's stopping everyone from moving. You would call this a bottleneck. It decreases the ability of everyone on that highway to get where they're going as fast as possible and it creates a traffic jam. This is what CPU bottlenecking looks like for your gaming experience. There are too many things trying to go through too small of an avenue. Now what if we had a 10 lane highway for a small town of about 20 people? Everyone would be able to drive freely and there would be no such thing as traffic jams because well, there's only 20 people driving on this giant highway. While you might be tempted to think this is great because the traffic is solved, but having a 10 lane highway for 20 people means there's a lot of wasted potential in that highway. It's not being used to its full capacity and well, that's a lot of wasted resources. This is what a GPU bottleneck looks like. While it's not completely damaging to your gameplay experience because things are still moving forward, it's not great to let the GPU bottleneck exist. It means that we're not getting the full performance out of our parts and we have a lot of wasted potential. All right, let's move the highway and traffic talk out of the way for a second and get a little bit more technical. To understand what a bottleneck is within our PCs, let's take a look at how the GPU and CPU interact with each other. In a balanced rig, the CPU builds frame one while the GPU renders frame zero, which for the sake of this video, let's say is a blank screen. The CPU then builds frame 2 while the GPU renders frame 1, our first bit of gameplay. When everything is working as intended, your system continues to flow like this utilizing 100% of your GPU until you're done playing. Let's hold on to this utilizing 100% of your GPU thought for a second. It will come into play in a bit. In a system that's suffering from bottlenecking, the GPU renders frames faster than the CPU can build them. And since the GPU can't render frames that haven't been built, it ends up spending more and more time idling as it waits for new data to come from the CPU. This time spent idling manifests itself as stuttering and dips in FPS, which, well, nobody wants. Remember to like 15 seconds ago when we talked about utilizing 100% of your GPU all the time? In a build that's suffering from a bottleneck, you'll be able to see these dips in GPU utilization. That's the idling, and this is how you can tell if your PC suffers from bottlenecking. All right, so then how do we avoid it? Now that we understand a little bit more about bottlenecking and the relationship between the CPU and GPU, let's take a look at some of the situations where you can end up in a bottleneck, some of the tools you can use to help you identify a bottleneck, and how you can avoid the situations. Many cases of bottlenecking appear after someone has upgraded their GPU without upgrading their CPU. While the new AMD 5700 XT looks beautiful in your case, that older CPU that it's slotted with might not be able to handle all that new firepower. It's also possible to accidentally create a bottleneck situation when you're building a new PC. Finding the balance between price and performance is important, but don't let the quest for the lowest cost build trick you into purchasing a CPU from generations ago. More importantly, when that's all said and done, being able to identify when a bottleneck is occurring is the first critical step to fixing one. Tools like HW Info and even Windows Task Manager will help you keep track of resource usage within your PC. Remember when we mentioned that your GPU will idle while you're being affected by a CPU bottleneck? Both HW Info and Windows Task Manager will be able to show you this occurring by watching the GPU usage graph. When it's idling, you'll see sharp decreases in its total usage. Of course, it is possible to avoid having to worry about bottlenecking entirely. All it takes is spending a bit more time thinking about your build before you purchase it. Let's talk about some of the best ways for you to avoid CPU and GPU bottlenecks. 
Firstly, when upgrading an older build, make sure you take a widespread approach to which new parts to buy. Sticking a new high-end GPU into a build with an older mid-range CPU is a guaranteed way to create a bottleneck. When buying parts for your new PC, keep in mind all the specifications for your new hardware. While it might be tempting to cut costs by purchasing an older GPU, CPU, or other part, it's possible that buying hardware that is too many generations apart from each other could lead to a bottleneck. PC Builds is a very helpful calculator that will provide you with an estimated average bottleneck percentage. It's important to remember that there are a lot of variables that go into a game's performance and no two games are the same, but this gives you a good high-level look at your potential performance and any bottlenecks that might appear. Finally, you should talk about your build with others. There are many communities filled with people who will happily help you out with your build before you purchase it. You can use websites like PC Part Picker or visit subreddits and communities like PCMR and talk to all the wonderful people there to help you visualize your build before making that all important purchase. And that's it. Bottlenecking can be identified as easily as it can be avoided. We hope that gives you a bit more information so you feel a bit more confident next time you're out there buying new parts. As always, if you're interested in other topics or other things that you want to learn about, please let us know in the comments below. But until next time, bye.